I'm David Learmount, Operations and Safety Editor at Flight Global. I've just finished analysing accident and incident results for the world's airlines in the first half of 2013. Six months is a short time, so I have to be careful with the statistics, but overall they look good. You can see the precise figures and the detail of the accidents in the 30th of July issue of Flight International or by registering online for membership of our FG Club. Just go to flightglobal.com and once registered look for In Focus and you'll find the safety review and much else to interest you. Basically, the first six months of 2013 have seen a low number of fatal accidents compared with the same period in each of the preceding 10 years. In fact, the figure was the same as in 2012, which was an all-time low of nine fatal accidents. That includes all types of airline operation, both passenger and cargo, jets and turboprops. Particularly worthy of note was the extremely low number of fatalities. It was actually about a quarter of the number that normally occurs in the first half of each year. The low number of casualties is not only the result of fewer accidents, it's also a function of the size of the aircraft that crashed. Most of the year's accidents so far have involved small aircraft. But the final factor leading to the small number of fatal casualties is the increasing crash survivability of modern aircraft and the latest cabin design. A perfect example of survivability is the Lion Air 737-800 that crashed into the sea just short of the runway at Bali International Airport, Indonesia. There were 108 people on board and the aircraft hit the sea at an approach speed of about 140 knots, but everybody on board survived. In early July, just outside the period of our study, an Asiana Boeing 777 crashed dramatically at San Francisco, also on final approach to the runway. Despite cartwheeling at high speed, the main hull remained substantially intact and only two people died on board. These two accidents cast a shadow over this year's safety performance so far. The figures look good, but it was aircraft design that saved lives, not high quality operations. Before I finish this summary, I want to mention the National Air Cargo Boeing 747-400 freighter accident at Bagram Air Base in Afghanistan. Amateur footage of the accident graphically reminds us of what aviation can still do in the modern world if we drop our vigilance for even a second. The 747 first appears in the video frame early in its climb after takeoff at Bagram and it has already adopted a very steep pitch angle. With its nose that high, the aircraft was simply unable to maintain flying speed. Sure enough, the signs of an aerodynamic stall begin to show, as first the left wing drops, then the right, and the aircraft is completely out of control. It'll be some time before the facts emerge. We know the aircraft was loaded with military vehicles and had refuelled for a flight to Dubai. Investigators have since issued a warning about securing military vehicles on board an aircraft when they're carried as cargo, so the focus appears to be on weight and balance issues. All seven crew died in the crash. Despite the Bagram tragedy, the overall message from the first six months of this year is that the safety figures are good, but figures alone never tell the whole story.